Welcome. In this section, we're going to look at some best practices for optical design and some general tips and rules of thumb to guide you along your design process. Before you start, it's good to understand the market specs and let them dictate where your effort will be emphasized. If you're looking at what type of project you're working on, if it's a custom optical system, say for a major NASA project where you're sending a single copy of this to space, that's the only one that's ever going to be used, the priority will be high quality and costs can often be high. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, if this is a product where you're mass manufacturing and selling hundreds of thousands or millions, then you're generally aiming for a cheaper cost with the deliverable quality. Somewhere in the middle is a high-end optical component that's, say, used in a fancy microscope. Here there's a balance between cost and quality considerations for these fancy products. Additionally, you should understand your timeline and how quickly this product needs to be moved to market. Think ahead before you start your designing on the quantitative limits. What kind of size and packaging does the product need to fit? How much space is going to be necessary? And what rate, weight range must the final design stay within? This could matter for a range of reasons, from needing to send a product to space, where weight matters greatly because it's expensive to get mass off-planet, to, well, maybe if this weight is above a certain amount, the postage is going to jump, so you want to keep the weight below a certain amount to reduce shipping costs. Additionally, you could consider the environment that your product is going to be operating in. Does it need to be resistant to rain, wind, snow, and other forms of precipitation? Is it going to be operating high in the atmosphere where you need to consider solar radiation? Is your optic meant to function outdoors in a climate where temperatures oscillate a lot, so like in a desert? In this case, you need to consider if your materials are resistant to large changes in temperature, since many optical materials expand and contract with changes in temperature, quick changes can damage some optics. Making sure you understand these environmental factors will help with your durability and designing high-quality products. If your product's going to need some additional attachments or mounts or stages, don't forget to integrate locations where these can be attached and make sure they're considered in your design process. Also, before you start, you should thoroughly understand the first order parameters of your system. Familiarizing yourself with the first order equations or having a cheat sheet handy will save you a lot of time in the long run. It's good to know your first order parameters because no matter how much you optimize with Tools and Optics Studio, it will not make up for a design that does not have a good set of first order parameters. No amount of optimizing will get you better than what your first order parameters say you should be getting. Many applications are also trying to look at certain object areas or fields of views. So this is often where a design process is started. And once you have this parameter, many other parameters are going to fall in place based on others. So if you know your horizontal field of view and you have a working distance you want to work with, then there is a specific angular field of view that will be used. And this can often then lead to a set focal length if you know your sensor size that you're going to be working with. So make sure you know what your set parameters are and then figure out what other parameters you need to work with to fulfill these. Design your systems to be close to first order, which means minimizing angles to make the system more paraxial. Generally, this will help minimize aberrations. This happens because uh, we're making the approximation that theta, or the angle, is equal to the sine of the angle. And if we look at how theta and sine of theta change as angles increase, this blue line here represents theta in radians, and this orange line represents the sine of the angle. So we see as the angle increases, 
then the difference between these two is going to increase as well. This gray line represents the percent difference between the two, so we see that increases uh, greatly as the angle increases. While you're designing, consider that you want your product to be buildable, it needs to be testable, it needs to be alignable. So Optic Studio will allow you to design a really nice looking system that is highly impractical. So there's several things you can watch out for as you design to help make sure your actual product can be built. So first off, watch out for very thin components, lens, lens thickness precision for high precision lenses, it's on the order of 0.05 millimeters. And very thin optical components will be more affected by this tolerance. Additionally, the durability of thin components uh, is poor, so your design will be more fragile. Generally, avoid curvatures of radiuses that are very weak uh, when aligning optics. They will self-align as you press them between two fittings. However, when the curvature is very weak, this alignment is poor and can be very difficult. It's better just to make the surface flat and compensate for any needed corrections somewhere else in your system. Watch out for sharp edges. They're fragile and prone to damage. Sharp edges can occur even for thick lenses if the diameter is not large enough to accommodate the radius of curvature near the edge. Design with symmetry. So if you have a lens that is nearly symmetrical, but not quite, it will be difficult to align because you cannot distinguish the two sides by eye. And this can make the alignment process much more expensive. So again, set the radiuses of curvature to be the same on both sides of the optic if they're very close and compensate somewhere else in your system. It's also good to design with symmetry around the aperture stop. This helps to reduce aberrations. For example, the double gauss shown below is a common design that takes advantage of symmetry, allowing the aberrations of the lenses on the left side of the aperture and on the right side of the aperture to counteract each other, reducing the aberration for the system as a whole. And just in general, watch out for components that are sensitive. If a small adjustment to the component produces a large change in the optical performance of the system, alignment of the system will become extremely difficult. Keys to watch for this are components that produce sharp bends in the ray tracing, these components will likely be sensitive to small changes. And spread out your aberrations. Typically, if a system has aberrations that are concentrated in one optical component, then that system will be much more sensitive than a system with the same amount of aberration, but spread out over all the components. Watching out for these various things will help you design products that are realizable and can actually manu be manufactured from your Optic Studio design. Thank you for watching.